In this chapter, we will have a look on how to use textures from Specular and Metalness workflow. Specular workflow is very common in VFX industry and Metalness workflow in game industry. Redshift is able to work with both workflows. In my case, for Redshift renders, I prefer Specular workflow. But currently, due growing popularity of Metalness workflow, very often you will deal with mixed texture exports and it can be very confusing. So in this chapter, we will have a look on how it works. I will start with Specular workflow. The main difference between these two workflows is how they will deal with reflection, which controls Fresnel's type. Specular workflow using IOR or IOR advanced Fresnel type it will work also with color plus edge tint Fresnel type, but remember that color edge tint Fresnel type is primary for metallic materials without diffuse contribution. So if you are using textures from Quixel Megascans, Substance or Polygon, IOR Fresnel type will work properly. As I explained already in Linear Color Space chapter, grayscale maps which controls numerical parameters needs color space compensation. For better visualization, for all these maps, I am using color correct node with gamma correction 2.2. Easier way is to use textures gamma override. But for this chapter, I will use color correct node instead. Diffuse, albedo or base color all means the same. It's sRGB texture mostly in JPEG format, and controls diffuse color. But remember one important thing. Always export your materials textures from external software only for one workflow. Because in case that you have mixed up exports and you have not just one of these texture, so as example you have albedo texture but base color as well, there will be definitely difference between them especially for metallic materials, because specular albedo storing color information different way than metalness albedo. In specular albedo are metallic materials represented by black color, but metalness albedo contains also metal colors information. So that's main reason why it's very important to use proper color map. Problem is, that these maps can contain any of three mentioned names. That's reason why it's not recommended to do mixed exports if you have no idea which texture correctly represents proper workflow. Quixel Megascans or Substance, usually using for specular workflow diffuse color, texture with name diffuse. We have two types of specular textures. Specular Reflect or Reflection Texture are names for sRGB texture, which contains also color information, mainly for metallic materials, and controls reflection color. Second type is Specular Texture, known as F0 type. It's grayscale texture and controls reflection weight. This Specular workflow coming mostly from scan-based materials. In this case, here is example how to properly connect specular texture which controls reflection weight. As you can see, sometimes it can be confusing. And I even didn't mention that I seen also reflection or specular textures which need color invert for correct result. So in case that your result doesn't look properly or you are not sure which kind of specular texture you have, try how it works in reflection color and after that in reflection weight, and you will easily see what connection produce better result. Glossiness or roughness texture controls reflection roughness. Difference between them is that glossiness is inverted roughness. So if I am using glossiness texture, I have two options how to properly control reflection roughness. First option is to use color invert node and all will work properly. But in case that I don't want to use color invert node, I have second option, where I will connect glossiness texture directly, and in RS Material Advanced section, you can find reflection section. 
So as next step, you have to enable option Convert from Glossiness to Roughness. And now we'll work Glossiness Texture properly again. If you have both options and you can use Glossiness or Roughness Texture, my recommendation is to use Roughness Texture because Roughness Texture is able to control material reflection roughness without additional steps. Next is Normal Texture and Bump Texture. Both these textures controls material bump input. Very often you will have only one of these textures to control bump input, but sometimes are provided both these textures because contains different pattern or different amount of details. In this case, here is how looks proper bump blend of both textures. Normal map using tangent space normal input type Bump map using height field input type. Blend between these two textures controls bump blender. If you need maximum intensity of both textures, use additive mode option. But in case that I have available both these textures and both produce totally the same result, I prefer to use normal texture only. So after that I can directly connect output from bump map into the material bump input. Next is Ambient Occlusion Texture, Cavity Texture and Emission Texture. We have two options how to use Ambient Occlusion Texture. First option is when Ambient Occlusion controls overall color. Second option is when Ambient Occlusion Texture multiplying diffuse color texture. But with Ambient Occlusion and Cavity Texture coming another warning. Some vendors, such as Substance, doesn't have by default cavity texture. And if you will convert Substance material directly by Redshift tool, you will see that after conversion, Redshift is not using Gamma Override correction for Ambient Occlusion Texture. But Ambient Occlusion Texture or Cavity Texture coming from Quick Cell Mega Scans both needs Linear Color Space correction. As you can see, there are too many mixed rules and it's very chaotic. So if you are expecting unified rules for exported textures, you will be very disappointed. And that's main purpose of this chapter. To show you what everything you can expect if you have to work with exported textures and why it's very important to have information about their type and color space. Reason is simple. In tools such as Quixel Mixer or Substance Painter, you can customize your texture format, type and color space. So you can choose it will be RGB texture or grayscale texture instead. It will be sRGB color space or linear color space instead. And that's main reason why it's important to have proper information about them or you will have extra work to figure out proper connections and gamma override corrections. But in the next two chapters, to make it more clear, I will show you step by step Substance workflow and after that Megascans workflow. It means I will show you exact names of exported textures and their proper connections into the Redshift material separately for each vendor. Cavity represents specular light occlusion. Sometimes Cavity map produces better result when controls overall color but physically correct is multiplying the specular reflection with the cavity map. If you are using workflow with specular level F0 texture, cavity will multiply this texture instead. Emission texture controls emission color. Last one is displacement texture. Sometimes you will see instead displacement texture, height map texture but both means the same and controls displacement. There are two types of displacement maps, but mostly you will deal only with height field type. All steps what you have to do if you would like to use displacement, I explained already in displacement chapter. But remember the displacement affecting actual geometry and quality of this map is very important. So if you have option to choose between quality of these maps, 16-bit or even 32-bit map will produce significantly better result. 
In case that you are using linear EXR format, you do not need to use linear color space compensation anymore. Metalness workflow using Metalness Fresnel type. Metalness Fresnel type is not using reflection color and a reflection weight. Base color texture controls diffuse color. Differences between specular albedo and metalness albedo I explained already in specular workflow. Roughness texture controls materials roughness. Metalness workflow using glossiness texture instead roughness very rarely. Main difference is metalness texture, which controls reflection metalness. Metalness values controls which part of material is metal or not metal. For technical details about these two workflows, check out video link which I am sharing with you. Also, I prepared for you PDF with both workflow schemes and you can download both scene templates as well. All other textures such as normal, bump, ambient occlusion emission and displacement are identical as I explained in specular workflow already. So remember that the main difference between these two workflows is in reflection section and Fresnel type. In the next chapter, we will have look on substance and megascan workflow.